Welcome back to Sean and Maya in the morning on Sports Zone Chicago on this TGI Mickey Ficky Friday. It's the weekend, baby. And I'll tell you what, I am fired up. I know it's only going to be 44 degrees. Uh, see, I'm out in the south suburbs, so I'm by the window. And it was supposed to be raining already, and it's not, and I'm not complaining. <laughs> That's not a complaint. Don't, don't get it twisted with a complaint because, I trust me, people drive like idiots to begin with. And when rain or snow falls, which is supposed to happen tomorrow, people drive even worse. So uh, believe you me, I'm very happy. It's getting kind of windy. It's still overcast. So I, I can see, I can easily see the rain coming very quickly. But um, we're going to have snow this weekend, Ivan. Dude, I'm ready for that, to be honest with you. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. I mean, this year, I don't know. This Usually around this time, I'm like, you know, eh, I'm, I'm, I'm over the snow. I kind of want to move to like Florida or something like that. Somewhere where it's hot all the time. But this year, for some reason, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, bring on the snow. Might as well 2020. Just bring on more of the climactic shit that we can. Just pile it on. Where are the zombies at? I'm ready for it. And hopefully it ends the 31st and good things happen. But I don't I don't think. I think this thing's going to last a little longer than anticipated. and Because people just don't want to do what's, what's right, what's, what's necessary. And there's just too many people feeling entitled, but that's on another note. I di- I digress, guys. I want to bring out our guy, man. He is, you know, he comes on every Friday, and I'm looking forward to t- having this conversation with him uh, about the Bears. He is the one, the only. He is the legend. Uh, in the he's like he's he's blowing up to be an, an internet superstar. Uh, people are gonna start throwing panties at him and everything virtually, of course, because you know. But uh, <laughs> he is our guy from the Tape Never Lies Network. Um, you can find him on IG because he's not really a Twitter guy. You can find him at Fulfill O on Twitter, but he's not a Twitter guy. He's more of an IG guy because he likes to. He's he's a visual person. All right, he wants to show you what he's talking about. So th- there's no question. So you can't even argue. This is what I love, and this is why the 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 the, the network is a tape never lies. Like you can't argue. You can't argue. And say, well, he was good. No, he just blew three blocks in a row. Tell me why you think he's good. How can you say that? You know, the tape never lies, and that's why. His, his following is blowing up like the world trade. Uh, let's bring him out. Remember, find him on IG at Phil underscore Atoshin. That's O T T O C H I A N. Phil underscore Atoshin. Let's bring him out, the draft doctor himself, and our good friend, Phil Atoshin. Phil, what's up, Papa? What's up, boys? How are we doing today? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. <laughs> it's cold here in Connecticut. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, it's getting there. Uh, I'm I'm with Ivan. I'm ready. I'm ready for a white Christmas, hopefully, because you know that's what? all. That's all we can look forward to at this point. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm good with. I think I can do that. I usually I'm like, yeah. See, because I don't like shoveling. I hate shoveling. Right, uh, right. right. But now living out here in, in, in Orland, you know, we got a little. You know, I'm in a townhome, and mm-hmm. we have. You know, we, we got an HOA, so oh, they yeah. come and they, they do all that for us. They do okay. that for you there. Yeah, so they you do. Don't even have oh. to worry. Oh, we pay them. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, you got to get your money's worth. I mean, if you're paying them, let it snow. Like <laughs> Bing Crosby over here. <laughs> but I, you know what? I really haven't had. We haven't had a really white Christmas here in a while, have you, Ivan? No, no, no. So I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with That's this. You crazy. know what? That'd be the, a nice way to end the year at this this cluster mess of a year. 2020 was. You just saw Debo, and uh, he just died yesterday. Uh, or Zeus, the wrestler, some known as Zeus, the wrestler, some known Debo from from Friday, there my man is. right there. You know, it, it's, it just doesn't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. 2020, like bad yeah. boys in the 90, early 2000s. So <laughs> it's been so, a rough year. It's it been has. a rough year. I mean, so, you dude, do you, realize, do you realize two weeks from today is Christmas? Yeah, I'm two weeks from I'm today. Just, I'm just hustling to get my wife's gifts covered. <laughs> my wife's like what do you do you don't do anything for the boys because i was yelling at her because the boys are asking for like nintendo stitch and oculus this virtual thing and my wife's getting them uh the nintendo ds and i'm like they didn't even ask for the ds she's like but they're young let them learn there i was like <laughs> they have all of the electronics <laughs> i go get them the oculus because i'm like i'm gonna play that shit too <laughs> and she's like what are you doing? You haven't done anything. So I think I'm just going to get him the Oculus on top of what she got. Santa's going to get him the Oculus. Okay, good. I hate for them to see that. and like, oh, no, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> <laughs> my best Christmas was when my dad and mom pulled the okey doke on me, the, the Red Rider behind the couch gift. 
when I all I wanted was an Atari twenty six hundred. That was a, that was a that was all I wanted, and then all the gifts it wasn't there, and the disappointment was in my heart. So I was trying to play with the train or whatever the hell else, and then my dad's like, "Wait a second, is there something I see over there sticking out from?" This was before the movie, obviously, and I'm like, "What?" And then you, it was like Christmas gold. Christmas gold, gold, Jerry, gold. Gold. <laughs> Did you wear the suit? <laughs> you still owe me a dinner. <laughs> Soup is not a meal. <laughs> Sorry, Pat, How is soup a meal? We're just in our own Seinfeld diatribe over here. Don't worry. Don't mind us. Don't mind us. <laughs> Who shovels snow with an HOA? <laughs> <laughs> oh we gotta have fun we, we really do because we're gonna come crashing the down nightmare there. is what's on the field i mean <laughs> the you, is the lakefront you can't even make it up the poetry if you will for neglect is what transpired at the end of you know the game i called it coaching ne negligence on the tape never lies this week on the patron version and the the one on our youtube channel and it and it truly was sean it was a, a showcase of here's how you do everything right and then okay we're there and i want i gotta take over and i gotta be the smartest man in the room and get tricky and it blew up in your face because the reality is He's not a head coach, like we've been saying for two years, two and a half years. I know I've been preaching it, and people are saying, oh, he's coach of the year. What are you talking about? Listen, the equations for me aren't, I'm not a math guy or a geography guy. I'm a football guy. I, I know what I am. I'm okay with that. When I watch the tape, I see somebody that's just guessing, that's overwhelmed. He, he was a position coach. That, like I said, Andy Reid gave him the freaking, you know, the promotion. That was his boy. And when you do that kind of shit and you hire that kind of shit and you got this backwards family run organization that's not football oriented, you get situations like this. And and Ryan Pace is a product of that. Let's keep it a hundred of what it is. It, he interviewed these guys. He loved Matt Nagy so much that he called him at three in the morning to tell him to have his wife ready for dinner. The reality was this guy has been so overwhelmed. Situationally, personnel, who's the quarterback, what offense you're going to run, how and when you're going to run, fundamentals, everywhere you see it. So how he's not fired bothers me every 24 hours at eight in the morning the next morning he's still there he's still there and and the last thing is sean and, and ivan everybody said well the mccaskies don't do that they don't fire people in season well the definition of insanity is continuing to do what you've done over and over and it doesn't work at some point accountability needs to be on the fucking door going into Hallis Hall. Accountability. Because that's what the old man stood for. That was what everything of Chicago Bears football was built on. Accountability. Mm -hmm. And somehow, you get these new hires, a new thing, and it becomes a joke where there's no accountability. For the left tackle, to the guard, to the defensive play, to the safety walking around, to the missed tackles, to the non-caring, to social media, to liking other people's thoughts about leaving Chicago and playing these guys. It's all over the chart here with this culture, this BU culture. This BU culture has no accountability. And if till the Naggies, excuse me, the McCaskies fire the Naggies of the world, in season, recognize your mistake, just like the Lions did. Mm -hmm. Send the message to everybody in the organization, from the ticket guy, to the equipment manager, to the trainer, to the health expert,
to the guard, to the left tackle, who is so pathetic and pitiful to every person on that football team. Oh, they mean business. Because right now, the only thing you've become is a punchline on the national stage from the charter franchise to a joke. That's where we're at. Yeah, it is. And it's really see, sad to see this, our organization. I mean, we call it ours because this is one we've grown up, uh, you know, worshiping. And I, man, I remember watching Walter Payton, Vince Evans, Jim McMahon, all those guys, Bob Avellini, even way back in the day, number seven, yep. you know, and to see this, you know, the 80s was great. There were a couple of teams in the 90s, you know, the 06 team went to the Super Bowl. And then you, you see this, and we've just never seen such ineptitude at the head coaching position. We've had, we've been talent devoid at times. And I, I, I can understand losing when you don't have the talent. You're just right, out. exactly. But when you when you have talent and you see the, the lack of leadership and lack of organization and the lack of football awareness that they have, that's really bothersome to me as a football guy. Like you can't do that. You know when they lined up. And, and, and here's my question: We'll never know. But that that last drive that seems all naggy. That oh, didn't seem, that didn't seem Bill Lazor like that he'd been running the whole game. That seemed like naggy, you know, because when they lined up on fourth and one, I'm like, they're running the ball. I'm like, they're running the ball. They're going to get stopped. They're running the ball. They're going to get stopped. <laughs> I said the same thing. You know, the biggest thing is I'm a running back. And the one thing, like, when we, we transitioned to the shotgun, uh, my later years of playing, I liked it and I hated it. I hated block, uh, running from the shotgun because I get the ball and now I'm literally basically one step into moving. I don't have any momentum. I don't have any exactly. strength. I don't have any power as opposed to going under center. Now I'm seven yards deep in the backfield. And when I get the ball, I'm at like three, but I got a four yard head start. And if, if somebody hits me, I have the momentum and exactly. the strength to get me a yard. My, so father, this, my father and I were on um, BHL after it. Um, and my dad said it. He's like, I, I don't like the shotgun ever on fourth and one just for what you're saying. Not only are you telling everyone you're running because you tightened it, but you're not giving that back the burst to get you that one yard. If you're going to tell everybody you're running, you got to get under center and and run the football. And listen, this guy has done this over and over. This isn't new. It's like pathetic because let's go back the drive before that. Like who in their right mind? He throws on second down. Mitch has the wherewithal to escape and dive and keep the clock running. This is the showcase of what a pathetic head coach you are. That you just saw that and you didn't have the wherewithal to say, oh, we almost got sacked there. <laughs> I better not do that. Let's just run the ball, make them use their timeout. And we'll punt it out of here if we don't get it. But Jordan's been running at four yards a clip. We've been under center. He's been tremendous today. Let's run it out. Nope. Let's drop back to pass up three. And what happens? He gets sa strip sacked. You just throw the game away. So then your quarterback goes down. You're dumping it to, jo uh, to Jordan Howard, to Montgomery. He's bringing it down the football field. And then you got Mr. Social Media, my money, this. He doesn't even know where the first down marker is. So you got fundamental details. Remember, Sean? Details he's talking about. He doesn't get the first down. So now you're fourth and one. And you have no plan, just to your extent, you run out of the shotgun. With an offensive line that has trouble sustaining blocks. They don't even solid block it, Sean. They, they freaking try to run inside zone and they're kissing and missing. Like yeah. the la fourth and one, let's just wedge block it, yeah. get it up in there and get the first down. Instead, we're going to get tricky. And that's really this whole, that yeah. whole chapter is yeah. the definition of this head coach. Yeah, it so really is. is. And you, you, know, you can't, you can't even, you can't even preach it. We had uh, Lemuel Stinson, former Lemuel Stinson, Bear Corner, number thirty-two. Yeah, he was on our show this week. I watched was, a little bit. He was talking. You gotta say, you gotta say it like you said it when you got that interception, Phil. <laughs> Lemuel down the hallway. Yes, <laughs> Lemuel. He 
talked about accountability with Ditka. Say what you want about the guy. You knew you had to be on top of your game from the corner to the running back to the left tack to everybody knew who the head coach was. And and it it's not happening here. And the reality is he he couldn't have said it better. His disappointment in tackling effort, mm -hmm. his disappointment in effort all around is a showcase of this coach. And, and it's unfortunate, Sean, because you had that game won. And it's so funny because you hear Nagy's quotes this week. We finally feel, felt like we found our identity. <laughs> Here. What, yeah. Losing identity? Oh, okay. Yeah. Six Th in a row? 32. He, he's, he pretty much can help you. It's like having a pencil that's not sharpened. And you just keep trying to write write with it. You know what? I just figured it out. If I use that sharpener, sharpener. I can I can actually write with this thing. 32 is the pencil. It's the get where Seinfeld again. <laughs> Run the ball. Oh. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Jerry would be. What would he be doing? I mean, Matt Nagy. It's not that hard. Hard. Just run the ball. <laughs> Unless you just want to keep passing all the time and lose and lose the game, and then it means. <laughs> Let's pass the ball up three. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're joined by the draft doctor himself, Felatoshin from the Tape Never Lies Network, talking some Bears football right here on Sean and Maya in the morning. So, you know, we're here. Mm -hmm. um, our boy Kenneth, Kenneth Davis, the former yes, Bills running my back. boy. Or we should say not the former Bills running back. <laughs> he, um, you know, we he wanted them to lose. And, and, and I, I jumped on the bandwagon because if the Bears finished 800, had they finished 800, and I, I mean, they still have a chance to, but I don't think they will, then it seems they can still – throw up at you and regurgitate at you. We've never had a losing season under this head coaching staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. The more embarrassing this is, the more inevitable a firing is. And it hurts me to watch my bears get manhandled and destroyed like this. But I know if that, if we need this to get rid of those guys, then give me this because I don't want those guys again next year. Those guys being Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy. And it's frustrating as a, I still wanted to win. As an athlete, I wanted to win, win, win. Right, oh, right. Okay. okay, but it's okay that they lost. Like I had to calm myself down. Like it's okay they lost. It's okay because one, it, it, we're gonna get rid, get rid of these guys, and more importantly, we get better draft selection as well. You yes. know, I don't want to be picking nine, ten, twelve. You know, after you get all the decent guys in the first four, first five or so. So you know, I'm okay with them losing. It's just very frustrating to me. Your thoughts on if the Bears lose out? I think they're fired. After the season, I, I've talked to a few people. I know I just think the wheels came off against Detroit. Obviously, the McCaskies put a lot of emphasis for whatever will, right, wrong, or indifferent, on the Packers. And you got embarrassed in your rivalry game on national TV, 41 to 25, and it wasn't even that close. It was an embarrassment, effort wise, the same story continuously happening it's not like we haven't seen this this is what six losses in a row and it's a showcase of what's going on so i think the wheels officially came off against detroit and that's where it's at i'm with you i kept it 100 on my show there was a part of me i've just felt like you i knew they were going to lose that game but i'm rooting for them to win i can't help myself Man. and i'm like so proud of david montgomery and the effort that he everything i scouted in that kid is showcasing itself and it, and it really is disheartening to see it all fall to pieces like that um and what you should have won because you finally found what works and not that anyone told you whether media yeah. or fans or anything else, but I'm glad you discovered. I'm glad you like Columbus and discovered. This. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's it's unfortunate because a lot of people, you know, you, you see my film work. I've been telling you this for years now with this guy. And it comes to fruition and then people will throw it back at you. And it's like, yeah, I've been dealing with, I've been telling you this. This is how you have to to win you you got to use Montgomery he's your identity find your identity through running oh, we've said it a hundred times all this season on this show 
It's not really that hard, but for him it is, and that's why he needs to go. So it is a boiling point for you to actually watch, you know, we have no control. If I was coaching this team, it would be completely different. So to watch the coach fumble the game away mm-hmm. on one level is is like, okay, you know, I'm not as disturbed as I normally am because, you know, it's one thing if you go against the Packers and you lose 17, 14, and you're driving down and you've played your asses off and you've had heart and shit goes wrong you're fired up it affects you but if you go out there and you got players loafing and the culture's all hyped and you hear the same rhetoric from the head coach every presser it becomes exhausting and then to see them go against a team that fired their gm that fired their head coach that are coming to your house and they beat you in a fashion where you completely the head coach completely let the team down the mccaskies shame on you for not sending the message and doing something that quote they never do well it's way past due that you stop doing what oh i want to be professional i want to let every coach know that when they work for us we're gonna stand behind them until the season's over then we fire them i'm black what's the difference you're you're waiting on the inevitable Send the message to the locker room that you're so in love with. Send the message to Larry Mayer in his lunchtime notes. Everybody should know that this is the charter franchise and that winning is the most important thing. And that the product on the football field to you season ticket holders and you fans from all over the world is the most important thing to us. Not the money we make, but the freaking team and the product on the field will never look as pathetic and as poor as it did last Sunday and unfortunately they don't get it either so it's very difficult to watch and root for a franchise that's stuck in the 1970s and thinking that there's some sort of benefit for keep keeping a incompetent head coach you know we talk about ac- uh, accountability all the time and that's the biggest thing <laughs> You know, for me, and we've, we've said on, I've said on your show, and you've said on our, my show. You know, it's funny. Though, so the Allen Robinson situation that really bothered me. You know, because yeah, the fact of the matter is, so he came out and said, "I didn't see the guy fall," which is very possible. Okay, and that's fine. But the fact of the matter is, you get you fight for the first down because if you if you had turned around a nice tight, quick tight circle and seen, then you could have made a move, jumped over him, and gone. Exactly. But you stepped out first. It was just, it was a brain fart. He- yeah, but I the totally fact of the matter agree. is, you can't have a brain fart. You are the, the, the top receiver, okay, exactly. on this team. You are number one receiver, no if ands, or buts. And number two is whoever that is way down the, somewhere. And you can't make that mistake because re- they rely on you. And to make that mistake there shows you're not mentally in the game because you should be, I got to get this first down. And, I, you know, first of all, my thing is, okay, I got to lower my shoulder because the DB was right there. Oh, he's not there? I can run by him? I got a touchdown? Perfect. But to step out like that was – I don't want to say he, 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 he um, laid down or, or quit, but I think he might have quit. Listen, on film it looks even worse because the route is a stop route or a curl route. It's just a turn around. You press that corner off. He did a great job. The corner slips. To your point – he doesn't know because he's turning to catch the football. But the reality is in the route and what it's coached up and the details of it is to immediately catch and body back because you're expecting someone Contact. to be there because you didn't run your route past the yard marker in the first place. That was my so very you know, point. Yeah, so you know that you have to press back. The fact that he does a a three a 180 but it's a a, a colt uh what do you call it Cold a attack. horseshoe a horseshoe <laughs> if oh. you watch him he goes like this he goes all the way around don't tell me at that point that you don't see the orange stick and the line that they put on for television you dive for that first down at that point that's what a maniacal receiver does from 
Chris Carter, Wes Welker, guys that are in the game 100% in the details, in it, don't talk about that shit. Be about that shit on Sunday. In the biggest moment of the game, you need to understand the reality of that situation. The fact that he didn't, and he's, like I said, chir chirping about his contract, chirping about quarterbacks, I mean, receivers come to die, chirping, 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 make the big play. There's no doubt the kid is an immense talent. He is. Is he the best top 20, top 15 receivers? We can argue. But the reality is, what separates those guys are those moments. And this is a reflection of the head coach. He doesn't know the situation. He fumbles the game because he's not prepared. He's not physically aware or mentally aware of where that yard marker is. And you made it harder because Mitch did his job there. Everyone wants to kill Mitch and everything like that. Mitch can't. Mitch should have stepped up or took off. But the coach put Mitch in that situation to get strip sacked. Let's be honest. The coach did that. So yeah. Mitch comes out, drives you down the football field, and your superstar receiver does something selfish and mentally pisses down his leg. Now you, you're looking like that. And, and that ultimately sets up the fourth down call, which is the coach. And it's, it's, it's prophetic. It's ironic. It's a showcase of how overwhelmed this staff is in regards to to the head man. I always say this, Sean. The most important position in football is the quarterback. Everyone knows that. But really, it's the head coach. I had somebody on Facebook say, well, you bring in a new head coach, it's still the same players, and you're still going to... No, that's not how it works. A culture, accountability, all the things we talk about that are missing, fundamental teaching, Getting on the goal line and showing pride in how you fire out, trust me, if I'm coaching the football, do you think I have a personal attack on Charles Leno? No. Charles shows me how he plays. <laughs> that I point out. Just like you said, there's nowhere to hide on the tape. Yep. The, the blog boys can write whatever they want, but the tape tells me if Mike Glennon was awesome, and he was just a tremendous quarterback, he would be praised on tape. The tape, the play, the performance show. Alex Bars, he's getting all these props. I look at him on tape, he stunk. He stunk. He was so, like, I mean, head down. Yes. Getting all late. Like. Getting all late. Mustafer played really well. But just because there's a new guy in there, it's the same story. Whoever's playing, if Khalil Mack stunk, I would call it the heck out. If Robert Quinn was no effort and just stealing money, I'd be like, waste of money. He's a the guy is playing his ass off. They're they're blocking, they're chipping, they're blocking, they're holding. He got tackled three times, preventing sacks, Robert Quinn, that is. People want to crucify him because they're looking at the stat sheet. But the tape doesn't lie. That's why we built this network. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. We bust balls and we joke on the shows and have great inter and whatever. But at the, the 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 baseline, the foundation of it is what you said in your intro of me. It's the tape. There's nowhere to hide. We stand by that. And that's where the accountability comes. I mean, look at this play here. David Montgomery runs for nine. It's second and one, right? Leno holds the defensive end right now you get the first down you're driving you're up 10 you're going to kick the field goal that's the difference in the game right mm -hmm. nope hold bring it back he hits cole Komet short of the sticks you got a punt those things those things affect the whole outcome it's all about the whole picture, not just one or two plays. Those things become elevated like the Allen Robinson play and the fourth down play. I mean, how many times in a game with other teams are they tracking back on all these different things? It's you it's, know, it's a coaching issue here in Chicago. Trust me. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, it really is. And we're you guys were joined by the draft doctor Phil Atoshin from the Tape Never Lies Network, talking Bears football right here on Sean and Maya in the morning. Yeah, it is um I'm, I'm going to talk about the defense. I'm going to ask you about the defense. 
Um, the last couple of weeks, they don't, they have not seemed focused. Right. They, it seems like they've been making business decisions as opposed to football decisions. Uh, Eddie Jackson's been allaying people. He doesn't really want to get his nose in there. Um, there's a lot of missed tackles that, you know, just touching people. I think they thought you swear that they think it's tagged. Has this defense checked out? I had a conspiracy with my dad on the show. Um, Ivan knows. I was like, is this because completely after I believe the McCaskies and Ted Phillips, who is more involved than people want to write about, is is saying with Nagy, listen, you gotta call people out. You gotta you gotta call this defense out against the Packers. He comes out and speaks or prior to Packer week to try to ignite them, right? And what happens? They lay an egg against the Packers. I mean, that was the worst the defense has seen. So I'm saying, is that a showcase of a team that's saying, you know what, F this guy. We've carried him for three seasons where people are, like Kenneth was saying, championing his win-loss record without looking at the big picture. And... To throw a defense under the bus and then coincidentally the defense has played back to back poor games. I don't think we're far removed from I don't I don't care. In the if if your culture, Sean, as we've said, is be you. That is the complete opposite of no I in team, right? Yeah. So together is how you win the game. The running back's only as good as his offensive line. We could see the talent, but if it's not getting to the second level and you're not, you know, get, you know, scoop blocking and sealing the edge and allowing your running back to get that space, then everybody and their brother that doesn't know the game is going to say, ah, he sucks. Ah, this guy sucks. Oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> That's what the story is for them. That's why I'm like, I look at this thing and I see a coach who threw his defense under the bus. We've been carrying you for weeks and years and now all of a sudden we're not playing well it's too coincidental in the timing of it and the effort on tape isn't there so yeah i feel like they quit on this head coach they're tired of the message they're tired of picking up the slack you saw it with Foles. you saw the same results with Foles that you saw with trubisky so at some point, the same stories, where does the blame really go? You could do it at Ryan Pace and the upper management, but on game day, the blame is going on the coach. And he is the most important hire that you're going to have. So if the GM is important because they're going to decide on talent. But let me tell you, son, the GM, if they're, any, if they're worth any amount of their weight, is talking with the head coach what do you what do we want they're step for step so mm -hmm. the coach becomes always the most important person because of how they handle the team how they communicate how they hold people accountable because let me tell you as a coach myself i can see if you allow sh shit to fester you lose a team you lose a culture they don't want to listen they tune you out and until you you do something different they're never, ever going to respond to it. Obviously, it's a fine line. That's why it's so hard to find a Bill Belichick of the world. You know, he got whooped last night. They ask him, is Cam your your quarterback? I knew you were going to ask that. Cam will be our quarterback next week. It, he doesn't, he's keeping it 100 with you. Cam's going to, that's how you handle it. Instead, we get, you know, rhetoric and jokes and, and people that are controlling the narrative of what you can ask this coach because he's going to get offended. I'm sorry. This is this is not the game where you're going to get offended. When you get offended, when you're getting lied to. And I think that defense is tired of it. You know the the um, the culture that you're talking about is one. And it, it sucks because I didn't I didn't want to say I think they're giving up, but in watching them, like I've seen, I played on teams. And where we've made the defense give up, All right, right? We just put so many points on the board and just really just whoop their ass. And and I've seen that. I see that behavior. And I was like, man, this really, really sucks. The one thing that speaking of culture, the one thing that I'm really just, just you know worried about is Jalen Johnson. 
I like this kid. This kid is a baller. Yes. If he gets a penalty. He does not care. It doesn't affect his aggressiveness at all. He's still coming. He, I like the fact that he puts the onus on the official. Like, I'm, I'm coming hard. I'm coming hard every single time. Throw a flag. Don't throw a flag. You know one thing. The, two things. The sun rises in the east, and I'm coming hard, okay, on my defense. And if you flag me, fine. If you don't, fine. If you remember what happened to Kyle Fuller his rookie year. That was the last year of Trestman. Yeah. And he started off great. Two, two interceptions against the Niners, but they also had Mel Tucker as a defensive coordinator. And as the season rolled on, he had the Erlacher and then the, the others, you know, the Briggs, I should say. Uh, certain players, a lot of the defense literally checked out on Mel Tucker and that whole team. The play of Kyle Fuller slipped as the year went on. There could have been other factors. The, the, the wall, the just the, the, the grind, whatever. But the plays dipped noticeably. How much could, is what they're doing now, this lack of uh, fire to play for this guy, how can that negatively affect Jalen Johnson? Because I, I hope he's able to come out of it, but I, I don't know if he can. Because you you, as a rookie, you're just kind of going along with the veterans. You know what I mean? And they have mm -hmm. this attitude. You have this attitude, and that's not an attitude you want to have with a guy who's going to be in a few Pro Bowls in the near future. Yeah, that was one of the things I brought up that I was concerned about because I was talking with Lemuel Stinson about it, in fact, mm -hmm. with Eddie Jackson and Sean Gibson playing the way they do where it showcases that they really don't care about the tackling aspect of it. Is that going to work its way down to somebody that like Jalen Johnson, who had his worst football game against the Green Bay Packers. Let's I called him out for that. He, he it looked like he checked out with everybody else. So the culture starts to uproot a personality and they become akin to that. That's why a head coach that's all over the chart, all over the team is so imperative it's maniacal they have to be involved in every aspect not the play sheet because you have to be able to hold that kid accountable and you're in their ear to the extent where they freaking hate you and then they love you because you are just tapping in to get the best out of them and it's those guys that are this with their play cards and worried about they're not involved in the game and i know people have stole this stuff and written stories and not given credit to the tape never lies network but that's fine at the end of the day i got guys like you that do and the reality is i've saw matt Nagy more concerned about plays than his team and that includes the defense because you are the ceo of the chicago bears on sunday you have to know who's playing. If Leno or Khalil Mack, throw, if Akeem Hicks is loafing, you're the head coach. Get your ass over here. Get over here. 96. What do you What do you want? Get out. Get out. That's how maniacal he's going to understand. Exactly. He, who are you talking to? Me? Yes, you. I don't give a shit how much you're making. If you do that, everybody's like, holy coach doesn't play. That's when tone. you you set the tone. That's not happening with this guy. Uh, all the guys, I really believe they believe. Yeah, they believe. They don't believe on tape. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking. You're going to lose a kid like Jalen Johnson, to your point. I'm giving you the round. But that's the reality. That's how I my father taught me. That's how Sam Ritigliano taught my father. And that's how we are raised. You treat everybody from Khalil Mack to the Jalen Johnson to JP Holtz the worst player on the team the same and you don't alleviate or dip from that you can give a wink here and there Mack you gotta get your ass up in the field and make this play coach I'm trying come on buddy you know and that's all he needs some players don't need but other players do and you have to be in the the process of that. You could say, what I, I saw somebody, well, you're a high school coach. What do you know? I, high school is the, the hardest coaching that you could possibly have because you're teaching. You're teaching the yeah. fundamentals over and over until these guys understand it. And everybody learns different. So you have to learn how to teach the best. That's why 
I know when somebody's just a position coach. That's okay. There's, there's guys that are just defensive coordinators or offensive. That's it. But we want to be quick. To, we need this guy's offense. Let's put him as a head coach. He's not a leader of men. He's a great teacher. But that other piece that I'm talking about, that you're involved, like my play sheet should be here in my head. I know every play, right? Just like I'm expecting the quarterback. I shouldn't be here. T Twins, 72, toss. <laughs> it shouldn't be that. You should be right there looking at it or have someone up there in the booth. That's what you hire all these guys. Coach, every time we go trips to the backside, they're not playing the tight end. They are totally cheating. So what do you do? You set it up. So you're getting, okay, they're not going to play the tight end. We're going to fake toss. We're going to action off of it. And we're going to freaking hit the tight end right through the seam. Because my coaches are helping me. Because that's what you do as a head coach. You don't just say, oh, I'm calling the plays and I don't listen. And that's really what you see on Sunday. And, and, and also what you do is you don't, you don't run it right away. You're like, okay, here's what they're doing. Because yes. what, happens is, and, what happens is coaches get comfortable. Like, all right, not, they don't see that we're cheating. They don't see it. Okay, good. And then exactly. you need that third down. When you need the third and one to keep the drive alive as to go for the game-winning field goal or the touchdown, that's when you pull it out. And that's when they're like, oh, snap. Because exactly. play, players get they get comfortable, coaches get comfortable. You know, you get you get uh, people are creatures of habit. And if not, I can keep cheating, and yes. they're not, and, and I can still get away with what exactly. I'm doing. Exactly. And they're not burning me. Then I'm gonna keep cheating and, and getting this advantage all the while. We see it, okay, but we're gonna exploit it when we need it. Not not in you know in the third in the second quarter, and it's you know 10-10. Okay. Exactly. No, give it to me when when you when it's and you can least afford to have it is when we're going to take it. That's a great coach. Yeah, that's a guy. Listen, Sean, I've said this. Ivan could tell you. <laughs> this guy is like, it, people ask, how do you get nine yards from David Montgomery, and then he's out of the game yeah. the very next play? So that's a rhythm thing. That's a personnel issue. Forget that for a second and think about a formational issue where. I formation, offset I, next play, empty, next play, trips, next play, goal line. There's no rhyme or reason for his formational attack. You have to, and that's what you're talking about. You set up the formation so you get the look. You know those surface pros that they have on the sidelines? In the boots, they have them all over the place so they can see the coach's angle of what we used to when Madden and everyone, you would get the Polaroid back in the day. They're looking at the front. What are they doing when we go two tight ends? This is the front. They're giving us an odd look. So this is how we got to block it. So you as the offensive line coach are over there. Okay, they're going to give us an even front again when we go in tight end. So if we're going to run inside zone, I want you, you got to kick out. You got to kiss and get on that back. That's what you're doing as a positional coach during the game. Helping these guys understand what they're doing. None of that is going on because your coach is throwing fucking spaghetti up at the wall. Here, trips, bubble screen. <laughs> it's like, I look at it, I'm like, they have a set, nothing up off of anything. And I think that is the showcase of somebody that's overwhelmed as a head coach and as an offensive coordinator. That There's no other way around it. You got to have a plan. You could say whatever it is you want about the dude. Um, from the Rams, the head coach from the Rams. You can say whatever you want about the kid. What's his name from the New England Patriots? The, he interviewed here. I always, what's his name? No, Josh, yeah, Josh McDaniels. McDaniels. Josh oh, okay. McDaniels has an understanding of formational philosophy. You, Matt Nagy has none. So think about this. Bevel, you look at what they did offensively and how they attacked the Bears and got back in the game. He understand what they were doing. They would motion a guy, right, Sean? And they would force Roquan Smith off of Hawkinson. Mm -hmm. So it, it would force Roquan. That was Bump their plan. So now out. Roquan had to go take the back or the guy running because they were in man. And then that would force Danny Trevathan against Hawkinson. And they won that matchup every time. That's why when Barone said... This game is our offense isn't about matchups. It's about running the play and finding the open. That's where you're. That's you want to talk about high school. 
That's JV offensive philosophy. You don't, in the NFL, everybody's good. As I, I, I'll know, quote this one last thing. Sam Richigliano said it to my dad. This is the difference in the NFL. It's a 10% difference. Everybody's talented. Don't, don't listen. Even Charles Leno or whoever, the, J.P. Holtz is talented. It's the head coach that gets that, squeezes that 10% of a difference, whether it be I know what I have to do and I'm going to go full speed and destroy somebody, or it's pushing that Allen Robinson, that 10% where he's just dynamic and unstoppable because the head coach understood how to get him matched up and get the right situation for him to showcase his talent. It's the 10% rule, and that's the difference when you're looking for coaches that motivate, that instruct, and teach. Those are the things that really are missing in Chicago. When's the last time you said, wow, the Bears really outcoached somebody? I hmm. can't even remember that. And that's why you got the wrong guy at the GM, Ernie Accorsi. We've gone through this whole thing. You got all these shoe salesmen making decisions. You want to make a decision, hire Sean, hire me. Let's go get Olin Krutz in here. Let's sit down. Let's interview these guys. Let's see who really knows the game of football and is going to preach about a culture that's not placating to the old lady what she wants to hear, popcorn and freaking Twizzlers. Let's go and really break it down in football terms where you are going to be a dominant force like the New England Patriots have been. A friend... And the Green Bay Packers, your rivalry. They've had Hall of Fame quarterbacks, but at the same time, they understand what those guys do, and thus they build around that in the right way. Instead, we got over here guesswork. It just drives me nuts. You know, one of the things that ha that it really bugs me is that is I don't see multiple packages. Right. So what you can do is you can go and you can have the same formation and have seven plays, ten plays, same so what it does is now you come back you you, you can go up tempo because now the receiver the receiver knows if, if you're in a trips we're staying in trips okay or maybe exactly. i'll send a guy motion so now the same personnel they don't get to substitute because you haven't substituted on offense and so now we we have our, our 10 15 plays we can run it out of this formation so if we find a weakness in this formation guess what we're not coming out of it to give you a chance to sub and, and exactly and cover that weakness I don't see that. You know, Never. if you remember in, in college, in, in uh, when I was playing with the, the Chargers, and especially when I played with the Thunder, we had packages where we, we just go no huddle. And it would be at the line. Our quarterback would come up and our receivers would come back. We'd be in trips, you know, trips right, split left, or trips right tight with a tight end. Exactly. And that, that whole series, that whole – no variation, no nothing, that whole series. And, we're, and these guys are running different routes, tight end blocking, tight end exactly. going out. We're doing different things, and now you really can't you can't determine by formation what they're going to do because there's so study, much being done off study, of the formation. Like, Holy cow! They do this. 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 Exactly. They do this. They do this. And then the next formation, they do this. They do this. They do this, just constantly, and that puts a lot of stress on the defense. The more that the defense has to study, the more likely is that they're going to make a mistake because they did didn't get that one thing and that's the one thing you hit him with hey phil great man i love talking you know i do brother i know i love you, you guys man, man you guys are awesome and uh you know what do me a favor let everyone know about your uh the tape never lies network yeah you guys can find us on youtube the tape never lies draft dr phil's tape never lies video series comes out every week and that is an offensive breakdown where i break down the tape and show you the truth of what transpired and teach you the fronts and the philosophy of what they were doing offensively as well as the humor that I put into it like nobody else does. Often imitated but never duplicated, Ivan, as I always say. And then you you can have, find us if you want to become a patron member where I break down the defense and the offense and we have pop-up shows. You can go to www.thetapeneverlies.com. And you'll see us there with more in-depth and analysis. And then we have a show every Wednesday night. Sean, you've been on it. We're going to have you on again, hopefully this before Christmas. I want you to come back on okay. and talk about this. Uh, keeping it 100 every Wednesday night. Um, with Shy City Sports sponsors that show. Usually we're on Wednesdays, but sometimes Thursdays when we have a night game. That was our 
thing because we're up late twice. And then Bears Hour Live is our big time show, our post game show. I call it the best post game show on the planet when it comes to the Chicago Bears right after the game. This Sunday will be live right after the Watson Trubisky matchup. Look at that. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. You can follow us on Twitter at thetapeneverlies.com or TTNL Network. And I'm on Instagram right there. You could, my DMs are always open. You can follow me on Facebook, Phil Atoshan, same thing. Or The Tape Never Lies there on Facebook. So we're everywhere you want to be, like Visa, right? Or is it MasterCard? Whatever. Savoir, Savoir Fair, you're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys, man. I got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> hey, Phil, man, great stuff, buddy. I appreciate it. We'll be in touch, dude. Love Thanks. you guys. Ivan, Sean, best, Phil. blessed. All right, Have now. a great. Guys, that was Phil Toshin, the draft doctor, talking football.